Okay, looks like we've got a good crowd so far. Uh, today we have the Teddy Cash team with us, and Teddy Cash is growing tremendously on Avalanche, uh, doing really well right now. So I just wanted to kind of learn about their team, their project, um, and the roadmap, and let the listeners uh, ask questions too at the end if we have some extra time. So let's get started. Um, this is Leo from Pangolin. We've got uh, three of the Teddy Cash team with us. Do you guys want to just introduce yourselves really quick? Sure. Uh, my name is Mr. Hello. Um, I launched a project together with Sugar Teddy back on um, August 26th. Um, you know, for me, I mean, I'm really motivated by um, personal freedom and the fact that applications and decentralized applications that are part of the general Web3 movement and how they can guarantee, um, you know, uh, are you know, very crucial civil liberties. That's a strong motivation for me. Hi, uh, <clears throat> I'm Sugar Teddy. I, I work together with Mr. Holon getting this launched. Uh, I basically, I've been working with Avalanche for a while. I've been using it uh, all the way uh, since this AEB bridge uh, was happening and we paid a lot of gas fees, like 450,000, uh, whatever that was. Uh, I also was an early user of Liquidity and I liked the protocol very much. Uh, its design, its principles and so on. <clears throat> And basically, I saw there was no liquid deal uh, for Conavalanche, and then we decided let's let's just do it. Good day. The name is Jamari. I tell people good, good way. Remember, Jamari goes Safari and it's Ferrari. Jamari, it helps a little bit, not a lot. I don't have a for Ferrari, but um, I am the the. As of today, I am the advisor for, for, for Teddy Cash. I'm very excited about providing um, support in their um, implementation of governance-related protocols, as well as expanding uh, where Teddy Cash is, is used and, and leveraged within this space. Because as, as I'm already mentioned, there is a need to increase the financial freedom and ability for people to access funds in a way that it minimizes re re restrictions and the removal of, of middlemen and and systems that pre prevent them from being able to accomplish their goals. And this is, is one step along that path. And Teddy Cash is providing that foundation for being able to compose an additional set of, of primitives and, and functionality that can really um, fundamentally alter the way people interact with with money. So I'm excited to, to see his continual growth. And, and we're very excited to have Jamari, I must add. Yeah, no, Jamari is a huge influence in this space. I've, I've worked with Jamari since like February or March, and, and he's just so knowledgeable and good. So he's a really good advisor to add. I'm really glad to see that. Uh, so yeah, so let's um, let's just dive right in. So so my thoughts on Teddy right now are just, I love the theming, I love the Teddy imagery i love the the team they're so professional and hardworking, and you guys have just organically grown tremendously that's awesome to see um so two things i want to cover first are um you just just like a high level for the listeners um you know explain it like i'm five why would i use teddy cash and how how does that kind of work does anyone want to take this one uh i'll take it so um if you have uh avalanche and you're optimistic about the future of avalanche as a protocol uh, you, you don't want to sell it. Uh, if you live in America or Europe, um, you may you are subject to capital gains taxes when you sell, uh, especially when you think it's going to go up. Um, so if you have bills to pay, uh, a wonderful thing about our system is you can use it to take out a loan in a stable dollar that uh, when you sell it, there won't be a capital gains impact. Uh, so you can pay your bills and not sell your avalanche and not lose your gains. Another reason is if you are, are bullish on uh, avalanche or another protocol or another token uh, on the avalanche blockchain um, you can use Aval uh, our system to get leverage to buy more of that token now our system is 110 percent collateralized uh, so you can borrow a hundred dollars on 110 dollars collateral that's a little risky because once you go to 109 dollars you could lose your collateral most people actually do about 150 percent so they're much safer so if you do at the right percentage there's pretty low risk of getting liquidated. So it's a really great way to increase your exposure, another way to pay your bills out uh, getting capital gains tax. You want to add to that, Sugar Teddy? I think you described it perfectly. 
not much to add. Yeah, uh, maybe for some people it's a great thing. It's basically you're you're getting leverage. It's the same as uh, uh, it, it's a <clears throat> decentral decentralized way of getting leverage. Uh, you don't have to use FTX or any exchange to do that. You can do it on chain, uh, up to eleven x leverage basically. Uh, but that's a very risky move. You shouldn't be doing that. But theoretically, you could, and I think that's pretty uh, crazy that you can do that. We started off by talking about the, the borrowing protocol, but borrowing protocol is really, um, in, in some ways, a means to an end, and that is to have a native stable coin on Avalanche. Um, we, we're big fans of Dai and MakerDAO, um, but Ethereum network is it's not that great for payments <laughs> because costs are so high, because fees are so high. By having a native stable coin Avalanche, we really make payments possible with a decentralized coin, uh, especially when we get to subnets and if we can bridge. Uh, you know, uh, the Teddy dollars over to X-Chain, we really will see incredible scalability that we didn't see on Ethereum. And again, I, the motivation is that people can, I, I would say freedom to, to speak, free, we believe in the freedom to speak, we believe in the freedom to earn, and the freedom to reward people for their labor. That's a great overview. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I, I think the simplest way to put it is, you know, you, you're getting collateral on your avox for taking on a bit of risk for that and, and i think that's really powerful it it definitely moves money around it it increases the flow of capital in DeFi. so i love to see that types of uh, that type of project on avalanche and because uh because it's a relatively simple system it's just based by avalanche i believe that makes it more secure um, we don't have as many moving parts if you're a multi-collateral that makes the system very easy to understand to grok to monitor and I think that makes it a great money Lego, a component of DeFi on Avalanche. We aren't looking for Teddy Cash to be everything at all, <laughs> to, do, to provide every function. We want to provide a very limited function very well. That's great. I'm glad you have safety and uh, best practices in mind. Very important as well. So I see a lot of people joining. Um, we've got the Teddy Cash team here to talk about their project. They're getting very popular. Um, if you haven't done so, just please share this Spaces link on Telegram in um, relevant channels so we can get everyone aware that we're having a chat today. So um, the next thing I want to talk about, uh, Teddy Team, is just kind of what, where are you at right now in terms of your TVL, your users, um, volume, any sort of metrics you want to share to show how big you've grown so far? I think the best metric that we are or, uh, mostly concerned about is the TVL. And I think in the last week or in the last 10 days, uh, to be precise, we grew from about 3 million TVL uh, to about 120 uh, as of today. Uh, we've been growing about uh, 100,000 uh, 100, IREX uh, has been co uh, collateralized on the system every day. So uh, yeah, uh, it's a crazy growth. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, 120, I think that definitely puts you in like top 10, top five maybe of projects on Avalanche. Very impressive. So that's great to see. And so um, let's talk a little bit about just the vision and the roadmap. You know, you, you've built this, um, you know, lending, collateral, stablecoin project. It's doing great. What, what do you see going on in the next year or so? What's the vision of where you want to be? Um, well, it's again, it's a great money Lego, and we'd like to see it integrated everywhere. Um, any place? Oh, you want to speak, Jamari? Yeah, no, well, actually, no, I, I didn't want to speak over you, but I mean, kind of what you was going to say about, about the money Lego part is, is actually, um, and a really important concept for, for, for Teddy Cash is because they're, they're providing this access to the stable coin, but the, even the way it's designed has some very interesting stuff, such as if you provide a, if you're another project and you provide a front end interface that allows users to be able to um, essentially mint uh, to, um, to TSD um, in that process, you actually can become a beneficiary of, uh, of the protocols, the distribution as well. So there's actually an incentive mechanism even designed at that level to make sure that people are integrated into their, the, their, their various dApps and applications. And as you increase the, those type of network effects, the, the the usability of it starts to increase and and really the products that you can create out of that become more interesting because right right now we're just looking at the aspect of okay you, you're able to um, collateralize take your avax as collateral and then 
create this native stable coin. But then also there's going to be the increasing usage of this stable coin inside commerce as a way, way of payment, as a way of interacting with various functionality. And really a lot of the efforts um, from my side, at least on advising, is going to be the, the bolstering of opportunities for that in partnerships with, with, with other dApps so as they, they recognize and leverage it and, and the benefits of leveraging it on in, in their execution. So, so that's absolutely one area o- o- over the next year, I think that people are going to see the, the further integration, similar to how DAI is, is kind of across the board, cross-chain, DAI is actually a collateralized asset that, that you can use inside Binky and, and Aave. The, the goal is to get Teddy in, in, in there and better. That's absolutely right. Well said, Jamari. Um, to, to Jamari's point, I just want to point out that we have a React library uh, that uh, other applications can use to integrate uh, Teddy Cash, the lending protocol, directly into their app. That's really cool. Can you um, can expand on that? I, I know the vision of um, the project is kind of that you, you just have other apps integrate into their front ends. Like, you don't really want to build your own front end, right? Uh, we have our own front end, and it works, but uh, we... I prefer to be invisible. I, I prefer to be in Pangolin. I prefer to be in every exchange where people go and they want to get more leverage or they want to get a stable coin based on their AWACS collateral. That's really great. Yeah, I think that, you know, um, this interoperability, this um, kind of collaboration between DeFi projects, like you use the term money Legos, that's really important. So I'm glad that's part of the vision. And um, you guys were talking about kind of the... TSD token and the Teddy token. I'd like to touch on the tokens for a little bit. Um, let's start with the Teddy token. So the Teddy token's doing really well. Um, in Pangolin, it's got like top five volume for the past week uh, in terms of 24-hour volume. Can you tell us what the Teddy token's used for and um, how you see it in the future? You want to take that, Sugar Teddy? Yeah, so the Teddy token at the moment, once you have a Teddy, it's, it's basically the reward token if you're staking your, your TSD in the stability pool. So you're getting as a reward, you're getting the Teddies. Now the Teddies you can do, uh, basically, you can stake it and you'll earn every time somebody takes a loan out of the uh, of the troughs. So everybody, somebody borrows uh, TSDs, you'll get about 0.5%. Sometimes a little bit more <clears throat> is then distributed to all the Teddy stakers. Now this is how we do it in the in the uh, this is how the original protocol worked. Uh, but we are ten uh, we are trying to extend on that and we try to make Teddy uh, a currency token. So you can also then uh, uh, take part in shaping Teddy Cash. Uh, with future protocols or parallel protocols or other verticals that you want to uh, go into. That's really great. So Teddy, uh, just to reiterate, is kind of the rewards token to incentivize people to participate in the protocol. And then in the future, uh, you'll be adding voting power to the token too. That's really awesome to see. And so the second token uh, in your ecosystem is the TSD stablecoin. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, how does this stablecoin differentiate from the other ones on the network already? Uh, so the Teddy dollar, as we call it, or the TSD, um, I mean, it's it's differentiated because, um, first of all, it's the only only um, native uh, avalanche back stablecoin that I'm aware of. There might be others, but that, that's that's the largest one, but for sure. Um, and is that it is fully decentralized because our contracts are mutable. Uh, if you transfer Teddy dollars to someone else. Uh, there's no way we can freeze your account. There's no way we can block you. There's no way, there's no intermediary. So it's truly decentralized. Um, and, and we think that really is, adds to, the, to its effectiveness, to its usefulness. That's really awesome. Yeah, we, we saw tremendous growth in Pangolin of the Teddy dollar. I think it, there's more liquidity than like USDC and DAI right now, which is really impressive. Um, so just one more question about the tokens and then let's move on to talking about avalanche a little bit so uh, just curious what what level of liquidity 
what do you like to see for the Teddy dollar before? You know, like, what what is your goal in terms of um, TVL for that token? Uh, I think a billion is a cool number to aim for. That's a TV uh, as a TVL for the entire uh, Teddy Cash protocol in the short term, and then you'll see. Jamar, you had something to say? Yeah, too? no, it's just funny. I, I mean, like, I know I'm on the violence today, but I, in my mind, I always, like, you, you, you want to grow to the point where, where you are the new choice. So so if, if you look at how much USDDC, how much DAI, how much TUSD exists on the network, you want, the, the goal is really that we we did displace the, those options as a viable alternative and that they become just, simple on ramps into the system but but once you really want to operate in the space you come to, to TSD i mean if we believe that avalanche is more going to grow and become the the premier network we we want to become that next asset that that you leverage after it's for me is in terms of uh, a goal I, I don't have a specific, precise number but i do think i have use cases where i would like people to be using teddy dollars um for example in burma right now the country of Burma or Myanmar is not a modern name for it. The banking system has collapsed. Um, people are having trouble collapse, uh, you know, uh, paying each other. Make the payment system is not functioning. I would like them to be able to use the Teddy dollar. I would like that to be an option for them so that they can, you know, their, their, their commercial system can still operate uh, in another country if there's a disaster or if the banking system totally collapses. I'd like us to be a viable option so that, that people, again, can earn what they deserve and reward those who deserve it. Those are all great answers. Um, it's awesome to see that the vision of Teddy Cash is beyond just what it is right now, but um, it wants to be way bigger, even though it's already pretty big. And so, um, so we touched a bit about uh, the origins of the project, kind of the problems that the protocol wants to solve. Uh, we talked about the tokens. Let's talk a bit about Avalanche itself. So uh, did you look across multiple networks when you were deciding to build this project? And why did you choose Avalanche? You want to take that sugar, Teddy? Yeah. So I've been looking into uh, for work on all these CBDC stable coin projects. It, uh, it became a big hype last year and uh, this year even more. Uh, so I was really looking into which system would actually be a good system for payments and, and generally uh, stable coins and things like that. And there I went through all the uh, blockchains uh, last year. Uh, try prototypes, uh, but it's always the problem that, especially with payments, uh, the finality of all these chains uh, is super slow. Sometimes you get fast transaction speeds or, or fast uh, feedback that payments uh, went through, but it's not yet final. But what you really want in, in payments in there is fast finality so that once you pay or something like that, you actually know it's there and it's not some uh, uh, waiting time or some hoping that it actually works out. So there, uh, Avalanche had the clear advantage and, and, and no other blockchain, uh, especially smart contract based ones that have a solid smart contract system like uh, Avalanche with the C chain, uh, that was just the fastest. So for me, that was a, a big thing, big, big winner. Now, the other thing that I liked a lot is once you're kind of need your, the, the subnet idea is, is excellent. So once you have your own thing that needs a little bit of extra or private space or extra uh, throughput and so on, you could eventually, when, I don't know when, when that is going live, but you could move to your own subnet. You could run your own EVM and have your dedicated uh, space for certain applications. Uh, I don't, I, I, Leo, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of Perry Merling, are you? Dr. Perry Merling? Uh, no, can you share a little bit about that? Sure, he leads the um, most uh, popular course on money and banking on Coursera, uh, and he wrote um, a great paper called The Inherent Hierarchy of Money. Um, it basically a view that there's always a hierarchy of money, and there's always going to be, a, you know, in a way, a multi-chain world when it comes to payments, because no rail is going to be fast enough. Every rail, you know, any single rail can be congested. So with Avalanche and, and the subnets, we really have both the fast enough finality and we have the scalability to scale payments, the payment system. 
that's really awesome. Now I'll have to look into that. Um, and those are great reasons for choosing Avalanche. Uh, it sounds like you've really done your homework and, and thought about the different uh, needs of the project and this type of solution. And um, Jamar, I'd like to hear your, your thoughts on it too. Like, um, you know, why, why is Teddy Cash a good fit and how was the timing of their launch in terms of what Avalanche needed? Yes. Um, f- f- so Teddy Cash, the thing that was interesting when they reached out, it's while the core d- design is immutable, they are still considering and thinking about how do they move the move the the app the DAP and the applications from it forward. How do you introduce governance mechanisms that would be beneficial to the, the protocol and help expand its reach? And also, when they talked about the subnets part, that was also interesting to me because I think that is one of the most attractive aspects of the Avalanche network is that there's this potential to extend our, our, our applications into a into the, the, the next gen our next level um, once that once that interchain communication aspect is is completed and the fact that that they are already thinking about how do they um, leverage that those, those assets is is the kind of vision and mindset that that is necessary to, to growing new financial I- institutions. Um, I, I have this big desire to be part of the establishment of, of, of new financial institutions that are de- de- decentralized, that are empowering to the people that, that use them and that are concerned about making sure that they are, they are unstoppable toward, towards any opposing forces, right? So that people can choose and elect to participate in systems that match their their interests. Teddy Cash is a very perfect example of that, of them consolidating and choosing a protocol, the liquidity pro- protocol, the liquidity protocol that that tries to consolidate the, the, the algorithms around what what makes a stable coin. So as the things that you build around it um, can then be uh, be be more in alignment with whatever one specific individual might want. Like one conversation we had was like, is there a potential? To, to leverage this this collateral based lending to create a collateralist lending, for example, like could someone could could you then pr- provide an, an outlet for people to now have a marketplace for for collateral free lending based on identity and, and re- reputation, for example, like th- those are hard problems. But when you have the, the first Legos around, how can you create a stable coin in the first place? You can now start answering harder questions. And that's what's, what's interesting to me. They're they're not afraid of working towards the the, the hard questions. That's really great insight. I appreciate that, Jamari. And, and one common theme I'm hearing that I really like is just the high level talk about solving money, uh, improving money in general, not just uh, you know specifically for Teddy Cash, but just just at a high level. I think a lot of people get into crypto and DeFi because it speaks to them in that sense that, you know, money should be for the people. It could be better. And let's work towards that. And I'm glad that Teddy Cash has that type of vision. Um, so, so great. We covered a bit about, um, about that side. Let's talk a bit about Avalanche Rush. Let's just take it, take it high level here. How has the Avalanche Rush and this explosive growth of the network affected your team and your roadmap at all? So I think what, when, uh, when he started doing uh, with Teddy, it was still very quiet. There wasn't even a Chainlink Oracle there yet properly. Uh, and then once it's there, it's still a lot of things shaking. Trader Joe wasn't as big. And things were just moving a lot more. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so for us, that was a little bit difficult to start because you didn't know, you didn't have all the, the, the Legos in place like you would have in Ethereum where everything is pretty much set and you know, who is going where, there's a curve, there's a, uh, and so on. So now I'm, I, I'm obviously most uh, uh, most excited that Curve is coming to uh, Avalanche. That's the perfect match that we can put the Teddy dollar uh, into a Curve pool. I, I think there's just a tremendous amount of excitement coming um, and uh, people flooding the system and it, as part of Rush and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little overwhelming. To be honest, <laughs> what are your thoughts, Jamari? Sorry, I'm fixing a, a a a microphone issue. I'll be right back. That's 
That's fine. We'll, we'll grab Jamari's thoughts too when he's ready. But um, as for my own, I think the timing of your launch was, was really perfect because we definitely needed this sort of uh, money Lego, especially as the network was growing. And especially with all these new projects coming on board, I, I see that I think Ave launched today and their incentives are going to be starting soon. And and like you said, Curve is going to be huge. This whole um, stable coin swap, uh, like asset swap, Lego is, is going to be really big. Jamar, are you back with us? Yes. Yeah, Jamar, why don't you go ahead and share your thoughts on, on Rush and how it relates to Teddy Cash. Yes. No, I mean, in regards, well, I, I really hope that Teddy Cash is able to um, become one of the participants um, of, of, of those incentives. But I think what's important is that as people are moving the, their, their funds across these bridges, that they're going to be trying to understand what's happening in an avalanche. And it is, does, as avalanche populated by by native projects that make it interesting and, and, and unique. And what, what they're gonna see is that, hey, this place is really f fleshing out and that I can actually be, be part of the establishment and, and the learning that has happened from all the work that has, has already happened on, on Ethereum and these, these prior networks and really consolidate these things into the, the purest forms. And I think that's really what Teddy Cash kind of pre presents is like, after MakerDAO did, did, did their collateral based lending with with the governance and everything like that, and the liquidity protocol, now you, you have this option to to be, be native, to be at the beginning, to be at, at one of the, the fast, the most, the fastest finality network that that's been created, and be part of establishing that and and, and those processes. So I think that that's the benefit. The Avalanche Rush is allowing people to come across and then experience the beauty of, of what can be. And, and that's what really drew me um, when I came across from, from the Pangolin airdrop. <laughs> um, I, I came across for, 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 the, for the Pangolins, but I, I, I experienced the, the, the speed of finality, the, the, the ease of transacting. And then, and I saw the space and I said, oh, this is something I can be a part of. Teddy Cash, provides people to be a part of something early, but also in, in a way that is based upon the learning and, and, and the institutional knowledge that's been already been created in this space. So that's kind of what I look at the Avalanche Rush. And of course, I mean, we're, we're gonna have people, I mean, I, I don't know how, how easy Curve uh, uh, adopts new assets, but I know from, from the Snowball perspective, like um, th this is perfectly positioned as something that that, that we will be adding to our, to, to the to sustainable vaults. At, at some point, um, hopefully in, in the near near future, so so that that kind of encourages all people to come across and then have these diff different routes of moving in in and out of the systems. Hopefully, all that makes sense. I feel like I might have rambled a little bit in there, but that's how I felt. <laughs> I, I love your enthusiasm, Jamari. I mean, you've been in this space for so long, but you're just still so so excited about building here every day, and that's really great to see. Um, so I, want, I kind of want to learn about um, the vision for partnerships and integrations from Teddy Cash. Um, so, you know, first of all, what's it been like working with Pangolin? What do you like about Pangolin and what could be better? And then also, what other projects are you looking to integrate with? Do you want to take that, Sugar Teddy? Uh, take it. All right, I'll take it. Um, the, the best thing is that uh, the people at Penguin, um, especially you um, and Justin, are incredibly easy to deal with. And it's, this is really important noting uh, that we've been, I've been talking to you and I've been talking to Justin, uh, a lot to Justin over the last two months and also to Brandon. Uh, and you guys have given us a lot of really useful feedback to help us launch this. Um, so again, uh, the Penguin team, you guys are incredible. Um, and of course, um, I think the app is well done, especially when you view you when you view the chart view, when you view your uh, your share of a pool and such, is super useful. And as far as other partnerships, um, uh, we're we're still talking to a lot of other projects. We'd we'd love to be in Curve. Um, uh, it's great working with Snowball with Jamari. Um, it, it's it, it's just launched a few weeks ago, <laughs> so the partnerships are still a work in progress, but we have a lot more to do. 
Yeah, that's great to hear, and I appreciate uh, the kind words about Pangolin. And I'd say the same about the Teddy team. Uh, you know, I love how uh, to the ground you are in the community, just talking to the users, giving very transparent updates all the time. Um, I really love that about projects. So kudos to building a good culture and community. In your to project. that point, can we have uh, Leon join? Because he manages the community. Yeah, do you know which username Leon uh, Leon? Is? Okay. Leon, if you're listening, can you hit the request speaker button for me so I can add you? I see him. All right, we've got the cute puppy dog image as your profile pic. So, Leon, um, you have to be on mobile to speak on Twitter Spaces, and I just give you an invite, so just hit the request speaker button, and we'll, we'll add you on. Yeah, well, okay. while we're waiting on that to get, and I can also answer another thing I, I personally look like about Penguin, is Penguin has a very clear process of, uh, about listening, incentivizing, and, and interacting with it, with, with you as a protocol, um, because it, it's a DAO and, and that clarity and transparency about the process is, is much appreciated. Uh, I wasn't part of the partnerships that have been like, um, created thus far or in the process, but I do recognize that that has been helpful in, in navigating the, the space. Er, and everybody can't say the, the, the same. Hey, I appreciate that, Jamari. Yeah, you know, we, we try to uphold this um, community-driven project ethos where we want to be transparent. We want everyone to have a voice. We want all our partners to get the same deal and a fair share. Um, so I'm glad that you're recognizing that and appreciating that. Hey, Leon, I see you're joined as a speaker. Uh, how's it going? Hey, guys. Uh, sorry for the delay. I was listening from the beginning, but uh, excuse my voice. My phone is complete trash, it's old and it doesn't work. So I installed an emulator for Android and now I'm joining via desktop. And you guys had a great talk so far. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I'm glad you figured that out. And I just want to say um, you know, kudos to all the, the marketing and community effort that you've been doing. I think it's been really awesome how you've grown the community. Do you want to share a little bit about yourself and your role at Teddy? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I was a DeFi power user, and I actually started my journey with Avalanche, um, back with the Pangolin launch. And then I remember the Snowball guys launching with the old UI, then the text-based UI. And this was a, my first introduction to DeFi, actually. And I decided to, because I, I found great success and I loved the community, I decided to go full time with this. And now I kind of evolved into getting involved into projects. And this has been a great experience so far. But I do not have any tech background. So I decided to take on the community and managing the, the different uh, social medias and speaking to people about, pre about uh, partnerships and stuff. So yeah, it's been great so far. I really want to call out Leon and the great work that he's done. Um, he's, he's really instrumental to our project. Uh, it's easy to think that blockchain projects are mostly code, and that's not true. Um, it's largely organizational. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are participating in DeFi. They are being a, you know, a good, little, good, good DGen, and they're, they're you know, participating in different protocols. But if you're listening and you are participating in DeFi, you can become part of our project. You have valuable skills, and there's a lot of work to be done, and you, you, there's a place for you in projects. I also want to say that <clears throat> this was crazy uh, experience starting this project and everybody helping out in the community, helping with the, 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 the skills that we lack, like uh, uh, helping out with memes and giving feedback. That was a really great experience. And, a lot of fun. I actually think that's like one of the very cool parts of eFi that you can like be so close to your users and interact directly with them. You you have a very fast feedback loop, and you immediately notice if people like something or dislike something. 
and it's a very fast growing space and it's very exciting definitely Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, DeFi is half the technology, but also half the community. And you guys have done a great job growing the community. Uh, I'd say you have some of the top memes on Avalanche, and I'm sure most listeners here would agree. And uh, hey, Coop, how's it going? Saw you wanted to come on to speak. Hey, yeah, thanks. I You guys are kind of talking about the marketing side. Um, I think it's an area that's really growing very quickly within DeFi, like realizing how do we how do we get more users? Where can we talk to them and bring them into the Avalanche system? And so I'm curious, Leon, like where are you seeing the best engagement outside of Twitter? I feel like Twitter's the common space for DeFi, but I'm wondering if there's any p- other channels that you really see community growing on that we might learn from. Hey, uh, great question. Um, I met most of the guys I interact daily with um, about DeFi and how I learned about the most projects um, via Telegram. I love Telegram. And what we would be another source would be Discord. Also great for community building and interacting. Discord has some features that are, in my opinion, even better, but I'm comfortable with Telegram, so I'm mainly using Telegram, but Discord has these great features with different channels. And yeah, these two would be my two picks. Awesome, thank you. Leon, would you, was it worth mentioning the Avalanche DeFi group, the most excellent one, which you are a moderator of? Yeah, that was also one of the groups where I learned most of the stuff because uh, the talk is very high quality and a lot of gigabrains in there that are also very kind and willing to share information and help you out if you have a problem or question. Yeah, that's one of my favorite groups too. So many smart people in there and it's very welcoming. Everyone just wants to learn and teach and share knowledge. So I think this is a good time to kind of just open it up to the audience to come on and ask questions if they want. But before we do that, uh, were there any other topics or pieces of info you wanted to share from the Teddy team? Uh, I think we're good for now. What about you guys? Uh, I think I'm good. Do you have Jamari? Do you have any points to add? Um, no. I mean, what, what do we talk, what talk about? We talk about. Uh, ability to, to to earn, to spend, to, to access finances, the the future expansion of technology. We talked about community. Uh, we talked about the, the the explosive growth. We talked about the interaction and partnership with Pangolin. The benefits of of using Avox, the Avalanche Rush. Uh, no, the, the only thing I, I think we, we didn't cover is like uh, what we have to do with maybe insurance and NFTs or so. I mean, I think we covered uh, a, a lot of ground. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So, yeah, we'll just transition into kind of more of a free-form um, conversation now. If you have a question or a comment, you want to come on to speak, just hit that request speaker button, and we'll let you on to ask a question. Just give everyone a few. Go ahead, Jamari. One thing that, that someone texted me and asked me about was I, I think they felt like they, they missed what, what, what people's roles were were inside Teddy, like uh, kind of like what, what function you, you play or, or kind of what function people are playing in the establishment. So I think people were, were interested in that. Yeah, that's a good one. Do you, uh, do you guys want to share your specific roles? What do you do on a day sure. today? Um, uh, I'm a programmer and I, I uh, yeah, I do the program programming. Uh, Sebastian's also a programmer. Um, and um, but we also do partnership and, business stuff. I'd like to step back and do just programming. Um, and Leon is the community guy, uh, Discord moderator, and also does some partnerships. It's so early and there's so much work to do that we kind of share most of the hats, except the programming is done by uh, Sugar Teddy and Mr. Lowe. I think right now we're, everybody's wearing multiple hats, like it typically is in the beginning of a new project, and eventually uh, more roles will emerge. And I'm also really keen to have Jamari on because he, he has a real skill set that um, a really tremendous communication ability. 
and he's also at the same time very technical. Um, and I'm really keen to have him on the team. Um, that's it. That's awesome. So two programmers, one community manager, and one Jamari. Uh, yeah, I've seen Jamari bust out some pretty complex smart contracts and just has great architectural and, and technical vision, too, and business vision. I have a question for Jamari, too, because you, you mentioned that you came over from an airdrop and then, you know, stayed for the speed and everything on AVAX. Like, how do we do more of that? Uh, how do we bring people out from other blockchains? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes. I, I, funny enough, I do. <laughs> I, I think I have, I have a thought on most things. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Nice. Please, please ignore that laugh. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what, what, what was I think? So one thing that I think that was, um, the thing that was nice about the Penguin one was it was specific and it was it was drawing to people that were kind of w within the network of interaction already. It said it was to Uniswap and Sushi people, right? So therefore, it, it wasn't just a general but blanket drop. It was to people who were, and it wasn't people that was in, in other industries or areas. It was people that would understand what the value of an exchange is, what service it's supposed to pr provide, and the commonalities and experience between what Penguin provides and what they've experienced in the past. So that when they came over to, to get there, the airdrop, they they experienced something distinct and new that was the nature of, of, of Avalanche. Um, so even though, even without changing a lot of the underlying contracts, just that first confirmation process was like, oh, this is different. This is something else than what I've been having experience on, 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 on Ethereum. So, um, I think for us, it's important that you, if when you do airdrops, that they're targeted to people whose work and interests are aligned with what what you're doing. Like, I, I mean, I love the idea that people do 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 airdrops to to, to to the delegators and validators, right? But unless your product has some relationship to delegators and validators, that might not be the person that you're tar that that you need to be targeting for for an airdrop or or for. Uh, like the generation of of noise you want to target those who are like for example like like to teddy cash like if, if we was look, looking at, uh, at presenting options to people right we want to be targeting the same people that are using ben key already that, that are using ave that are bridging over die and in and, and usd dc like i mean like one technical thing that um i think snowball as well as we want to do that we'll, we'll talk about teddy cash about is having this ability to so when people share their their uh when they connect with their wallet, provide a, a little n notification of, about like that contextualizes where they are. Like, hey, I see you have die. If you're interested in die, you, you you're really going to like w w what we're doing here because this is is the native version of that, right? And that can quickly inform people in a very personalized way to what they what what they can expect. And I think that targeting and, and that formatting things to be around who you're interacting with is going to be growingly, is going to be more and more important. And I, th I think that that's relevant for every protocol, but especially even people that, like Teddy Cash. That's a really great answer, and that's a good question, Q. I also came over for the Pangolin airdrop, and, and now I work for Pangolin, so that's kind of funny, too. And um, so I saw that uh, Checkmate came on as a speaker. Just want to give him a chance to ask a question. Hey, how's it going, Checkmate? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, first and foremost, it's really cool to hear these, uh, just to, to get more insight to the team and what you guys are doing and just the foundation of everything. Uh, obviously, one of the single hand, like most important things is building a strong community. And I think with that, we can all agree come just really good networking. Uh, for lack of better terms, just just additions or, or uh, things that complement the project. And for for people that are really connected in the industry that may have access to um, a lot of members that can help contribute to this project. Are you guys putting people on roles or, or, or allowing to, uh, people like us just to connect and help that project? Like, I, I don't really know who to communicate with, but I do have really good connections in the industry that can help contribute to this project, whether it's on the marketing side or coding um, or just getting more exposure to the project in general. How are you guys handling that right now? Uh, so so far, uh, people have been coming to us and contributing. Uh, we, we, um, so they've, they've created graphics, they've created um, they've created content, and they shared with us. It's great. As far as someone connecting to the rest, um, they certainly can talk to Sugar Teddy or Jamari or Leon. Um, who should be the focal point, guys? 
I guess I would have three times the focal two, point. And... I actually have two applications I want to share with you. So okay. I can do it. Go ahead. Just message me, and I will introduce you to the rest of the team, and we will get together, meet each other, get to know each other, and then we can see. Yeah, that's a great question, Checkmate. Thanks for coming on. I, I think you're asking, like, how do people just that want to help help projects like Teddy, right? And um, I think the first step is just to have a conversation about interests, about needs, like like Leon said, just have a have a chat. Um, I, I think on some projects I've been on, they tried to post specific like bounties for specific tasks, but that just feels a little uh, less personal, and people don't have as much engagement as just talking to the team and seeing what's needed and being in there every day. That's a good question. Did you get your question answered, Checkmate? Yeah, yeah. Look, obviously with, with all these new projects on Arbitrum or AVAX, you know, there's a lot of projects that are rug pulling. And, you know, for someone like myself who, who has some pretty powerful connections in the industry, I like to see and just feel projects out, see if the team's legit, if they're actually building something or if it's just kind of a, a cash grab. And, you know, it looks like what, what the team's building is pretty special. And so, with those connections, I was hoping that I could bring some additional value to the project and just connect you guys with the right people who have successfully funded or, or built good projects on Ethereum that I think are probably looking at the, the AVAX network and just what's kind of transpiring in this ecosystem. So, yeah, we'd love to connect with the team and, and I appreciate the time, guys. Awesome. Looking forward to meeting Awesome. Checkmate. Awesome. Checkmate. Thank you. Thanks, Checkmate. Appreciate that. Hey, uh, anybody else have questions? Just hit the request speaker button. We'll add you on. And Coop, did you get your question answered directed to Jamari? Yes. Yeah, great answer. Okay, perfect. And I see we have a request from Wilfred. Going to add you as a speaker. Hey, Wilfred, are you able to speak now? Hmm. Looks like there's an issue here. Okay, well, we'll, tr we'll keep trying to add him. Oh, there, there we go. Might be connection issues. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes left in our allotted time. Um, Wilfred, I keep trying to add you, but I'm not sure why it's not going through. Maybe you can ping the teams directly if you can't get on, if you have a question. Uh, before we wrap up today, I uh, just had an interesting question for everyone on the call. You know, just aside from the projects you work on as, as a neutral Avalanche participant, like what projects are you excited to see building here? I'm really excited about ARC20 uh, technology. And as um, eventually, and hopefully in the near future, I'd like to see it where on the C chain, you could mint ARC20 assets. Um, the X chain hasn't gotten a lot of love, but its throughput and performance is always going to be a magnitude better than the C chain. And um, so I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, both the ARC20 standard and, uh, and the applications we can build on the X-Chain. Because, yeah, it's just, an or it's, it's just another level of scalability. I've personally been very excited. I mean, I'm related to anything I build uh, about the, the on-ramps and off-ramps, um, the wire, the, the 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 wire developments to bring people to the C chain or through the X chain, I believe. Um, the the minting directly on chain of 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 TUSD. Eventually, I think USDT is supposed to be coming. Um, things that allow people to to, to move move in and out. Um, I do want all those type of systems to become more robust. 
Um, but I think that ability for people to to, to bring in fresh funds and, and experience the, the the space is one of the applications I think is probably most important for growing because we have great applications now. I think we just need to allow people to be able to experience the greater numbers. All right. It's a great answer. Hey, how's it going? Fine. Uh, so my question uh, would be more about the tokenomics and the governance model. Um, well, you said last week that uh, you will go to into a, a governance model, but uh, how do you manage to do that after the team gets like 25% of the total tokens? So how will this governance work after that? Uh, uh, to it, going to go. Uh, you take it, Leon. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, um, the thing with the twenty-five percent, we definitely that's one of the reasons we want to push governance like really fast, so we can adjust these rates and give part of that back to the community and let the community decide via governance what they want to do with these funds. And, and also, these funds are the rest of the team tokens are locked for one year from now, and then we'll see quarterly unlocks with another quarter. Like one quarter of team funds every quarter after one year. Uh, what did you want to say, Mr. Hello? That's what I wanted to say. Well done, Leon. All right. Thanks for the answer and the question. Did you get your question answered? Yeah. OK, perfect, perfect. So we've got time for maybe just one or two more questions if anyone wants to come on. Uh, Wilfred, I see your request. I keep clicking the add speaker button. I'm not sure why it's not letting you on. It says there was an error adding you as a speaker. But um, just swing by one of our telegrams or discords to talk to the team after this, and we'll definitely get your question answered. Yeah, we are around so, of time. Please come by, take a look, speak to us, ask whatever questions you have. We're glad to answer. Okay, saw so Chainlink 2 requested, but then they disappeared. Okay, well, anyone who has more questions, let's bring it into Telegram and Discord. The teams would love to answer. And let's just share some final thoughts here before we wrap up today. Uh, Teddy team, you want to leave us with some final messages and thoughts? You want to go first, Amari? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, just, I mean, my, my, my mind's a reminder that that these are are tools that are meant to empower you but it's also important to understand how they function and and, and how, how they work so if you do participate within the ecosystem remember to watch your collateral ratios um remember to to, to pay attention to, to to what's happening with with the volatility of avox price and um and uh as much as possible um pr pr provide yourself some some room and some space so that regardless of what happens um, whether things go po crazy positive or crazy negative, that you are in in a space mentally, physically, that 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 you are okay and fine. Um, the space move moves fast, and and it can aid you. So it's important to in invest in your mental and physical well well being. Um, I, I, well said, Jamari. I guess the things I want to say is that uh, really encourage people, uh, especially non technical people who are participating in DeFi. Um, if they're interested, they really can join a project and build. Uh, there's a need for your skills, whatever they are, because um, there's so many different skills needed to build a project like this. Um, I also want to say that it, it, uh, it is very, I sure you experienced this, Leon, uh, uh, sorry, Leo, is that uh, I didn't realize that um, crypto really is a 24-7 business. <laughs> um, you will be working seven days a week, 24-7. Um, <laughs> it doesn't slow down. And uh, we're lucky that we have a couple of members, um, team members in Asia, 
and uh, we're able to offload a lot of work to them when um, so we can sleep. I agree. Yeah, it's it's definitely very time consuming, but it's also so exciting at the same time uh, because it's such a fast moving space and you get all these interactions with users and from all around the world you you can meet and connect with other people's uh, people so that's that's really cool and we want to thank all of you for such a, well, a warm welcome to the avalanche uh, DeFi space as builders uh, some of you maybe know me from telegram before but yeah it's, it's really awesome to be here Awesome. That's I want to thank great. the Pangolin team. You guys have done a lot for us um, before we launched and continuing after launch. Um, and uh, you really are a pillar of the community. Um, I really appreciate it. Awesome. We appreciate having you guys on to talk about your project, share your thoughts, and building a, a great platform for the ecosystem. So that's all the time we have today. Uh, thank you, Teddy Cash, for coming on. If you haven't tried their platform, go try them out. And we'll wrap up. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.